This is the World on Water Global Sailing News Report for February 8. Unfortunately, during the week, Spindrift 2 had to pull out the Jules Verne Trophy race around the world as they hit something in the water and broke their starboard rudder. In America's Cup news, the Dutch have made major announcements. In New Zealand, it's the 470s. The Melges are showing off in the USA on Sydney Harbour, so GP setting up. In Perth, it's the Women on Water Regatta. In La Sable de Long, at the end of the global round the world race, in second place, Mike Slate describes a very frightening moment of sailing alone around the world. Well worth a listen. It's harrowing. So sit back, relax, here's your weekly global sailing news hit. In 2021, freedom, fighting the nature elements, trying to take control of them. History will be written. A spectacle which cannot be matched. In the ultimate combination of international sports, technology, and innovation, the America's Cup, there is a new challenger. Dutch sail. The America's Cup is the oldest competition in the world in sailing. It's the heritage, the obsession through all the years for people to win this. It is like the Formula One for sailing, the top of the bill in the maritime world. For centuries, the Dutch sailed the waves. And today, Dutch sailors and the maritime industry are leading the way globally. We are surrounded by water. Half of the country is underwater. For the Dutch, wind and water, it's just in our blood. When I grew up sailing here, the America's Cup was something that happened in another part of the world, and, and Holland wasn't really part of it, but now here, finally, it has come. In 2021, the Netherlands is finally competing, and that's great news. It will spark innovation across the nautical and aerial industries. The America's Cup makes uh, things possible that we didn't imagine before. It really triggers us to start to do new things, new materials, new control technology. It's the team that wins the race. It's not the boat, it's not the sailors, it's, it's everybody. Uh, it's the best sailing team, the best technical team, the best marketing team, the best legal team. This is a unique chance for the maritime industry and brands to present the Netherlands as the one and only maritime country in the world. It's a huge missed chance if we don't participate now. To win this as the Netherlands is probably yeah, the biggest uh, challenge I faced in my career. If you dream about winning the America's Cup, yeah, and once that you can do it, you, you have to do it, you have to go for it. If we win, it means the America's Cup comes to the Netherlands. The road to the America's Cup is dotted with challenges and opportunities, especially when one of the America's Cup World Series is coming to Skaven in 2020. It's time to show the America's Cup and the world who really rules the waves. New Zealand, beware. The Dutch are coming for you. Wilcox and Paul Snow Hansen in the 470 class. You had a fifth in your first race and then bullets across the board. Some really good consistency from you guys for this regatta. Yeah, no, we we're happy. It was just mainly awesome to be racing on home waters. We don't get to do that very often. In your last race today though, you were trailing the Korean team by quite a distance. How did you manage to pull that back? We had, um, we had a lot of boat speed, but we couldn't seem to put the boat in the right spot. So it um, took a while, but we ended up figuring out what to do and um, pulled them back all the way to the last mark. And we just picked them before the line. Yeah. 
fun race. Well, we've just had three months off um, with Dan breaking his wrist and we're pretty um we're feeling pretty fresh so it's awesome to get back on the water and pretty much everything feels like um, we've got lots to learn and a um, bit of time off the water makes everything pretty exciting so happy to get out there. at the 2019 Ocean Bridge NZL Sailing Regatta. Congratulations to all the winners and thank you to our sponsors, especially principal sponsor Ocean Bridge and the Royal Akarana Yacht Club in Yachting New Zealand. I'm Kate Montgomery for Live Sail Die. See you next time. side so I set up at the boat and just kind of waited for the time to tick down had a good acceleration and uh, from there was leading for a bit um, then the penalty happened <laughs> really my mindset was just oh darn that sucked and then um, I really just had to do everything I could in my power to uh, go fast and get to the top mark I ended up working out and I'm really grateful to uh, be taking home the bronze I am so incredibly ecstatic and proud of Luke for getting the bronze medal today. I've watched him as an Opti sailor to a laser sailor and now a fin sailor. And not only a fin sailor, but now a World Cup podium athlete. Uh, we saw it with the American and the fin, so those are my favorite oh my moments when like, something unusual like the medals the are pretty much certain <laughs> and locked in. So Hi, my name's Paige Raley. I just won the silver medal. The Golden Torch that's always awarded to the top American at this event. So this year, the winner goes to our silver medalist, Paige Rayleigh and Laser Radio.
first day with the Australian... I'm an Olympic gold medalist in sailing and also I coach, I'm the head coach of the West Australian Institute of Sport Sailing Program. And today with the Women on Water experience we've got over 60 women down coming to try sailing and have a sail today out here on the waters of Perth and they're from over 15 different organisations. I'm Claire Costanzo, skipper of Team Fusion from Sydney, um, based out of Royal Prince Alfred Yacht Club. This week we have sailors from Sydney, New Zealand and Bermuda on our team. Uh, my name is Johanna Berkvist and uh, I'm from Sweden and I'm uh, the skipper of Team Berkvist Fashion Sea. My name's Emily Nagel and I'm from Bermuda. The big thing is we're trying to encourage more female teams to come down because it's a wonderful opportunity to compete here against a number of teams where they can gain some confidence and to such a supportive environment. So to be able to come down and, and get more women's teams out, match racing against the men. I always love challenge, the challenge of match racing and sailing against the men because they are slightly more aggressive sometimes and it really brings out that competitive instinct and I think the opportunity to race against so many different teams and different levels in the match racing circuit is something that girls should really take up that opportunity for. It's great to have some great sailors like Harry and Will who are still in the youth age group to race against. They really um, push you in every single race, even when you're in front of them, you're just looking back and you know they're really, really on your tail. It can get quite stressful, but it's really, really, really good practice racing against those kind of guys. Yeah, I think it's really fun because now we actually, for the first time, managed to beat Will. <laughs> we haven't done that before, so it's a good challenge. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, we learn heaps from racing I think uh, the smaller events like the Warren Jones are key for getting more women into the events because it gives you a chance to race competitively but also times to make the silly errors and get them out of the system before you jump into things like the World Match Racing Tour where there is no time for mistakes. So we've got two languages on board, obviously the rest of the team's from Sweden and then Hannah and I are from Australia. Yeah, Hannah was really smart and put Hannah and I on the bow so we can sort of do our own things and only really need to know when we're tacking or driving and then they can it's actually really calm for Hannah and I because we don't know when it's a stressful situation unless, <laughs> unless they really start getting angsty. But no, it's been really good. Um, they have their team chat and then translate the important parts of it. The most exciting moment of well, I've had a couple of swimmers with, which make things entertaining. <laughs> um, and some pretty tight racing all round. So I really enjoy the sport of sailing and being able to sail with. Um, Six awesome chicks is um, pretty cool. I just want to keep sailing, see where we go, and as long as I keep enjoying it, I want to keep going. I would really encourage um, female sailors to try to come down here next year, mostly because it's such a nice event and uh, the decor, the area here is amazing. Uh, yeah, and it's also a lot of fun. And it's amazing to be like seven people in one crew. Uh, it's, yeah, we are having a really good time. Come to the orange of shooty shooty! <laughs> <laughs>
idea. Do you want to do the lights? No. Well, you keep yeah. filming and you keep filming and that's okay. So. Okay. <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, very cool. <laughs> well done. We knew we were going to get uh, hammered with 70 knot winds, 60, 70 knot winds. We knew that was going to happen, so we were going south as fast as we can. But um, Gregor and Abilish were a little bit behind, so they were getting it first. So we said, we come on the radio three times today, you know, that day. So we can, you know, see what's going on, how are we doing. And, uh, and then Abilish comes on, and Gregor comes on, and Gregor's lost his mizzen mast, <laughs> and, and Abilish has lost his boom. And, uh, and, Ab and Gregor was really saying, I don't know how... how to the stern to the waves you know I got no idea and, um, and and but I was with no wind the center was on top of me <laughs> I had five ten knot winds and uh, but massive seas because I just had 40 knots from sure. the northwest big seas 40 50 knots from the northwest but I knew the southwesterly was going to come soon and it was going to be really strong and, uh, and and then I said we come on the radio three hours later three hours later I was still in light winds but no one comes on the radio so uh, <laughs> So then I said, oh, you know, we can give, uh, uh, we're allowed to use the call to, to, to call Don. So I called Don and Don said, yeah, Ebilesh has been rolled, he's been dismastered and, and um, we don't know about, or Gregor, and we don't know about Ebilesh. And then, and then it started coming for me, you know, and um, yeah, it started really coming. And, and really in the beginning, that was the, that was the worst moment. Uh, well, straight at the beginning, yeah. when the wind comes, it's, it, it got really quickly up to 60, 60 knots or something. Yeah. And I had, um, I had, I I always put left sail up because in a storm before with 50 knots winds, I was always, I put no sails. I tried one time, no sails. I was talking to you about that actually. Mm. I had no sails, but then I thought I'm going to run it with, with the storm jib, just a storm jib on a pole up there. And, and, uh, and, um, and then a wave crashes into the back of the boat and it breaks the back door mm -hmm. and the boat is, uh, it's above the chart table, the water. Because when the when the boat when the wave came in, the boat went like this on its side, and the water just you know just came in, came in, came in, and uh, and, and the boat was hitting over this side, and it was till the ceiling on this side, till about here, uh, like this, you know, and uh, yeah, that was a pretty uh, <laughs> because then there was uh, it was still 12 hours for me of that storm still to come, you know, and this was only at the first hour, you know, so I was like, shit, you know, what so how's you gonna do this and. Uh, Yes, and then and then um, so I pumped, and I had the electric pumps on. I pumped. I still pumped for one hour and two electric build pump till I got it empty. And um, and in the meantime, that one hour, I, I had the priorities first. You know, the wind vane was broken, the lines were broken, so the boat was not steering. So uh, and, uh, the boat was side on, or actually still trying to sail, but it was actually going a bit like this. You know. Um, but every now and then it would go like this, and I hear the, the sail flap hard, you know, and the boat just go, and, and, and then it would go back, and uh, and um, so then I fixed the wind vane, and then I got to put a new line in, and putting a new line in the marina is is not a nice job to do. <laughs> <laughs> I got to hang over the back, put a little line in first, and then pull the big one in, you know, through the pipe. It's and then waves are coming, and. Um, and well actually first I start hand steering so I put from this winch to that winch and from that winch to that winch and to the back I put lines across the cockpit because I thought you know if I then there's a line here and there's a line here you know and I, and I just go steering I will hand steer through this storm you know and I'll go hand steer but it was dark and uh, at night and the, the waves were coming and I couldn't I was not doing a good job with hand steering you know it was really hard you know so then I thought yes, I, the rudder is really hard it's really hard to steer, you know, maybe in daylight and you can look and, and you can do it, but uh, after one hour, I, but then I got a massive knockdown, a big knockdown and uh, up to maybe 120 degrees and I got thrown out of the boat on the side mm -hmm. and I hang on the side and then the boat comes back and it just, I just get to go like a catapult back into the boat, thrown onto the bottom of the cockpit. <laughs> really hard with my back you know and uh, then I thought I'm gonna fix the wind vane now and because the wind vane <laughs> is much better to do he's doing a much, would do a much better job than me you know yeah, yeah. I put the wind vane up and it actually went fine 10 hours it went fine you know 
I I went outside. I, I you know I, I just thought I'm gonna be active. I'm gonna I'm gonna go outside every 10 minutes. Uh, just check if everything is good. Uh, put my head outside. Just step up here, have a look, go inside, and uh, and every 10 minutes and, close uh, everything. Close everything again. Well, actually, I I lift the door in. I just climb over it a little bit and I hang around, kind of like this and like this. Twice the this one got loose, so it's good that I did that. You know, it was good to uh, and um, and um, then I thought maybe it's good. I, I start doing a pray, you know, and uh, that's what I did at, at the beginning. And then and I thought, oh, this praying really works because I got thrown over and thrown back in, you know. So <laughs> and um, okay. so, but that was really uh, one of the scarier moments, I think, you know, uh, of, of this trip. And after that, it never got as worse, you know. It never got as worse and. Um, uh, I had a really great, uh, had a really great ride. The Pacific was really good. Oman is just is so unique. The the people are fantastic. The countryside is is beautiful. At the moment, the forecast for what was the light wind venue is very windy, so it could be spectacular. We will uh, see uh, many, many uh, beautiful places. Today on the coastal race, we won it. Uh, it was very close with the uh, Oman Shipping Company. Saying Arabia Zuto has been intense. Here we have our hydrofoils. Right here, we have our light airfoils. So they have a bigger wing. That's a 2.9 meter wing on these ones. It creates more lift and so you can sail in lighter air. Over there are our high speed boards. It's about a 2.4 meter wing, so less lifting area than our light, light air boards. We sail them about 12 knots and above. Here we have the rudders. We're allowed to have two sets of elevators, a light air set and a heavy air set, and we're allowed one vertical, which is the main shaft of the rudder. We'll chuck on the light air elevators because they have a little more area, lifting area, for the lighter winds. And when the wind gets up, when we put on our high speed boards, we'll put on the high speed elevators. They're a little less area and they can go faster. Here we have our wing. Wings are our power source. They provide the power to get the boat to propel forward. We trim it like a pilot would trim an aeroplane wing. But unlike a pilot, we're trying to get maximum thrust out of this at all times. We're not just trying to do a safe flight, we're trying to go as fast as we can in that flight. In our setup, as you can see, we have a table setup. It's very complicated, there's a lot going on here. Controlling camber arms, controlling twist functions. And then over here, as you can see, this is the old Artemis wing. There is no table in that wing. In terms of form and function, they are identical. Physically, they're different, but they'll all work exactly the same. Hope you enjoyed taking a look under the hood of the fastest sailing boat in the world. We'll see you in Sydney in February.